All right, let's get right into it. Today, we are tackling a huge question for anyone building a serious home lab. Should you go with ZFS replication or should you dive into Ceph? Look, when you're chasing that dream of high availability, storage is always, always the biggest roadblock. So let's figure out which one of these paths is the right one for you. But first, let's have a little reality check. You've spent all this time building your Proxmox cluster, even enabled HA, and you're feeling pretty good about it, right? But are you actually protected when something fails? That one question right there is why we're doing this explainer. It's going to force you to decide what you really want a system that never goes down, or one you can just get back up and running really, really fast. You know how it is for a lot of us. The journey starts with a simple NFS share. I mean, it's easy, it works, and everything seems fine, until, you know, it doesn't. This quote just perfectly captures that danger. You've basically put all your precious storage eggs into one single, very fragile network basket. And that basket, that vulnerability, it has a name, a single point of failure or spuff, if you want to sound cool. That one little NAS box or server that's holding all your VM disks, that's the linchpin of your whole operation. If it decides to take a nosedive, your entire beautifully configured high availability cluster, it comes crashing right down with it. Okay, so what's the solution to this puzzle? I mean, how do we build a storage setup that's just as tough and resilient as the rest of our cluster? Well, the community has pretty much landed on two really powerful, but, and this is key, very different solutions. Let's start with the most direct route, what I like to call the simple path, ZFS replication. Just think of this one as being all about efficiency and ease of use. This isn't about never failing. This is about being highly recoverable. You know, the biggest reason ZFS replication is so incredibly popular is that, well, if you're using Proxmox with ZFS on your servers, you already have it. It's right there in your toolbox. It's basically a system of scheduled snapshot-based transfers. You just tell Proxmox, hey, send a copy of this VM's disk over to that other node every 15 minutes. And it just does it. And the benefits here really all point to one thing. It's just so easy. It's simple to set up, it's built right into Proxmox, and it's not gonna bog down your cluster's resources. Oh, and it's fantastic for migrations. You can replicate a huge VM in the background for hours and then cut over to the new node in like seconds with almost zero downtime. It's pretty slick. But okay, it's not perfect. It definitely has its frustrations. And this user put it so well. The Proxmox interface for setting these jobs up can be, well, super tedious. Let's say you want to replicate one VM to two different nodes for extra safety. You have to create a totally separate job for each one. So it's click, save, new job, click, save. It gets old fast. But for a smaller lab, hey, it gets the job done. Now let's look at the complete other end of the spectrum. If ZFS is the simple path, then Ceph, Ceph is the power path. This is a true data center grade storage solution, and it is built from the ground up for high availability. Let's be real. Ceph is what you graduate to, and good enough just isn't good enough anymore. This is a real-time distributed storage system. Every single piece of data you write is immediately chopped up and spread across your entire cluster. What that means is the whole concept of a single point of failure, it just kind of vanishes. And here's the fundamental magic of it. Your data is everywhere at once from the very beginning. So if a drive dies, or even if an entire server goes offline, who cares? The cluster just automatically rebalances and heals itself using the copies of the data it still has. Now, you absolutely need a fast, dedicated network for this, but the result is true, honest-to-goodness resilience. But, and this is a big but, all that power comes at a seriously steep price, and that price is storage space. In a typical three-node setup with the standard setting of keeping three copies of everything, you only get to use about a third of your raw disk space. That's right, two-thirds of your storage is just for redundancy. Now, there are other ways, like erasure coding, but they come with their own performance hits. This quote just hits the nail on the head, doesn't it? It perfectly captures the core dilemma everyone faces with Ceph. You're basically trading a massive chunk of your expensive hard drive space in exchange for that enterprise-level peace of mind. All right, so we've looked at this simple path with ZFS and the power path with Ceph, two super compelling but totally different options. So how in the world do you actually decide which one is right for your home lab? Let's just break it all down side by side. ZFS is low complexity, it works with just two servers, and it is perfect if your goal is fast and simple recoverability. 
Ceph is the exact opposite. It's complex, it demands at least three servers and a really good network, and it's built for true, always-on, high availability and scaling. Really, the most important thing here is to match the tool to your actual situation. If you've got two servers and you just want something simple that lets you recover quickly from a failure, ZFS replication is a no-brainer. It's the clear winner. But if you have three or more servers and you have the time and the desire to learn and build a truly bulletproof system, then Ceph is the goal you should be aiming for. So you see, at the end of the day, there's no single best solution here. This isn't a competition where one of them wins a trophy. It's really about you being honest with yourself about your goals, your budget, and how much complexity you're willing to deal with. You just have to decide what level of resilience is good enough for you. And that brings us right back to the final and most important question you need to ask yourself. Are you trying to build a system that can never, ever, ever go down? Or are you building a system that you can bring back online quickly and easily when something inevitably breaks? The answer to that question, well, that's going to tell you everything you need to know.